Alan, the co-owner uh, of Retro Power, and we basically build awesome cars for uh, other car enthusiasts in the UK and around the world. Behind me is uh, an Alpha GT Junior, which we've just recently completed, which I think it's fair to say is among our favourite projects that we've completed to date. The guy that we built it for, he kind of had one of those things which just never happens to anybody I know, where it was almost like you could say it was a genuine barn find, but essentially he had a tip off that it was in a falling down junk filled garage in London. And went over there and yeah, sure enough, this, you know, this Alpha 105 was sat there with just piles of old crap all over it uh, in a garage with a caved in roof. Um, and yeah, he spoke to the owner and a deal was done for a remarkably good price. <laughs> that kind of find just doesn't happen generally. <laughs> kind of wanted it to be a track day car, so fairly track focused, but comfortable enough to go to shows in and show it off at breakfast meets and that sort of thing. He wanted it four cylinder, naturally aspirated, he wanted it to be a bit of a screamer, he wanted it to be seriously powerful. Um, I think there was, there was talk at the time about it being capable of fending off almost any BMW M series model around any UK track, was more or less what he said to me at the time. It really offends the purists, which is something we love doing. Um, mainly because it's not got an Alpha engine in it anymore. So we've got a Millington Diamond engine in this. Uh, 2.7 litre, producing 300 horsepower. And that's from a naturally aspirated four cylinder, which is pretty insane. So the power to weight this thing's got, because it's just shy of 900 kilos, um, is pretty phenomenal. The engine choice, originally we were going to do something that would have offended even more people, which is we were going to put a Vauxhall red top in it. But we got to the stage, we were just mocking it up in the engine bay and he said, guys, what do you think if I get a Millington Diamond engine in it? And we were just all like, yes. And then kind of leading on from that, we were mocking up the Millington in there and the gearbox question came up and he started talking sequential and getting overexcited and <laughs> carried away with that idea. So we said, well, all right, we'll do sequential on it. So we've got a Sadev six-speed sequential box in it. And then with kind of all the mechanical side of it laid down, we started going through the interior design plans on it. The seats are just Recaro pole positions, and actually that's something we get asked about so much. What are those seats? I really want them, and they're just Recaro pole positions. You look at them in black, and they look like any other race seat. When we when we got it here, we just sort of went straight in with as we do with all our projects of stripping it back to bare metal, cut all of the outer panels off before it was even blasted. So we essentially just blasted the inner the inner framework. Most of the outer panels replaced. So the rear quarters are new, the front wings are new, the doors are complete carbon fibre the doors, the bonnet's carbon fibre, the boot's carbon fibre, uh, all of the front end metal work on it was replaced. The wheels we had made by a company in Italy called NTM, seven and a quarter inch front, eight and a quarter rear. We kind of just wanted to have a, a, a sort of muscular look to it. been through a good process of testing on it. Once the car's finished, we do an, a, a bit of initial road testing, goes on the rolling road to get driven flat out through the gears and make sure all the running gears are good flat out. Then we did an initial track day at Mallory Park, which is just down the road from us, with the owner, where he nearly crashed it, actually. <laughs> Not, nothing to do with the handling, but it was on the Toyo Triple H that are on it now, and it was pouring rain. And uh, he span it 360 degrees down the grass, about uh, probably two metres from the Armco. Uh, which was a slightly scary moment for all of us. And I've been out on a, a road session more recently where I was pushing on a bit more and it certainly feels incredibly stable. Yeah, you'd think in an 870 kilo car with 300 horsepower <laughs> the tail would come out really easily but it takes a lot of persuasion. Um, so yeah, it certainly feels confidence inspiring. Because it's 2.7, um, you know, it's a massive capacity for cylinder. It's got a lot of low down torque. It's got a, so much pull at sort of 3000 RPM you don't need to redline it every time you gear change, but when you do, you know, the, it's just so rewarding because of the sound of it, you know, it's just amazing to hear it on song. It's certainly not when you <laughs> drive to the shops every day. It's a bit more raw. It's not really a bad thing because he, he did want it to be mainly track day, but it's it's an intense place to be. That's probably a good description. So it's, a, it's certainly an intense experience in there, um, but it's kind of rewardingly intense.